Hey, what's up guys? Filterless here. So today I wanted to share a video with you about Auto TDP. There's an app called Handheld Companion and there's an awesome feature that needs some work called Auto TDP that people are recommending on multiple channels for capping the frames and I'm going to show you why you might not want to use that. So right here we're on Forza Horizon 5. We have CPU boost enabled and we're capping the frames down to 40. Just a locked 40 across the board and getting good temps. A really solid look at the 0.1% lows amazing just holding 40 steady all right so here's CPU boost disabled we we're at about 28 watts before now we're at 16 same exact settings capping the frame as it needs power if you watch it will go over 20 and sometimes I think it goes up to about 25 or so however capping it at 40 still perfect 0.1% lows 1% lows and averages, nothing's changed, but we're getting better watt usage. So it's staying below 20 most of the time. So that's a pretty significant savings to be getting across the board nonstop. And you can see right here, look at that 27 when it needed it still. And then you can see it drops back down when it doesn't need it. So we're at 17, 16 watts. So it just depends, but still a perfectly steady frame rate. All right, so here we're gonna enable this automatic TDP. I've seen people recommending this. For smoother experience, here we go, 40 FPS. Now it's auto TDP that's running it. We'll start our little benchmark again. Y'all let me know what you think. Great wattage, look at it going down even lower. So we're saving on wattage for sure. Look at that, 12 watts, that is amazing. Now look at the, uh, look at our frame time. Our 0.1% lows, this game is, it's not just jittering. It is actually rubber banding on every game I've tested, which is why I haven't done a video on this program. I think it's going to be amazing at some point. However, to recommend this over using RTSS to cap the frames, look at the frame time graph. The whole game is slowing down, speeding up. It's actually making it difficult for me to even drive the car. So yeah, if you want this and it doesn't bother you, you can save watts, but this is the kind of performance you're going to be getting in every single game that you lock frames on, pretty much. It's terrible. Like this is absolutely terrible, unplayable. I would return the unit if this is how it performed. All right, so here is Crisis Remastered. We are running with CPU boost enabled once again, starting off with that and locked at 40, perfect 40 FPS. And you'll wonder why I'm looking at the sky because I'm gonna show you something with auto TDP here in a minute. And one of the main issues besides the rubber banding so here we are, locked 40, only 20 watt usage. This is with boost enabled. We're locked at 40. The fire's a little more intense. All right, so here we're just disabling it just to see if it makes a difference. All right, and so here we are looking at the exact same thing, 40 FPS, we're at 12 watts now. So instead of 20, we're sitting around 12. So close to just half the watt usage when we're running around with it off for the exact same performance with CPU boost disabled when you're capping the FPS. All right, so here we go. Let's turn on automatic TDP, 40 FPS again. I've removed the RTSS cap. So we're going to reset that frame time, run around like we did before. So there you go. That's what you're going to get when you use auto TDP to limit the frames. Look at the wattage though, eight, nine watts. That is amazing. And I want to say this tool has awesome potential. I'm not bashing the developers of the, I think it's amazing. Uh, it's going to be a great tool once it's kind of ironed out, but to be recommending this to people to get this, setting a FPS limiter, don't worry about boost, don't worry about anything else. You can just set it in here. And this is what you get. Seems a bit ridiculous to me. That's why I haven't recommended this tool to y'all yet. If you want to try it, it is kind of fun to mess around with, but look at the just insane jitters and stutters. We look at the sky as soon as we bring it down. I don't even know what the milliseconds is going to. I had it capped at 30, but it's going way higher when you look down. It's lagging really bad. And it's because it's always trying to pull the watts and test that limit. And that's even why I recommend turning CPU boost off. It's actually the opposite of what auto TDB is doing. CPU boost even no matter what the megahertz at, on the CPU is, it's drawing more watts. You can be at 1500 megahertz with CPU boost on, you can be drawing eight more watts and still be at 1500 megahertz with it off and be drawing that much less wattage. So it's not a matter of how high the hertz on the CPU is. In fact, when CPU boost is off, usually the hertz will sit higher, but it's actually a lower power draw. And just sitting here, you can see 
26 on the 0.1s, 27 for the 1%s without even moving the camera. And what happens is when you get in lower intense areas, it starts pulling more wattage with auto TDP. So then as soon as it's in a tent area, there's a major rubber band effect as it tries to catch back up and give you that wattage you needed. And I think one way they could fix this is actually allow it to run one, two, three watts higher than the very minimum. So it has a little bit of headroom as you're moving around. It might be a little more consistent experience, but it would use a little bit more power. And for the last little bit, I just wanted to show you all CPU boost on. It's only drawing 18 looking right here, not moving around. Then here we just disable them again. And you can see looking in the same area, we're at 11 watts now. Anyway, guys, I don't want to bore you with the video. I'm not going to be putting charts or anything up. This is more just a video I wanted to get out quickly for my viewers, at least to say, if you want to use the program, I'll have a link below. You can mess around with the settings and stuff. Keep in mind when you download it and enable CPU boost, it actually removes the option from power options. It goes into the registry and sets the value as a zero, which is weird because the value is actually one by default. I don't think it makes a difference. I just think it's weird. It is modifying things in the registry like that. So you would have to go back into reg edit to get that option back because the program takes it out of power options. And one last thing I did want to add is there's a lot of other stuff in the program. So I'm just covering the auto TDP piece because that doesn't work that well. However, being able to set the watts on the fly is kind of cool all the way from, I think it's like 10 or five and one point increments. So one watt increments going all the way up to 30. You can even unlock the watts and go past 30. I definitely don't recommend doing that. And also the frame rate limiter in there is great just to be able to toggle it on and off. And CPU boost does have a toggle you can just toggle I'll go it right on and off and there's a lot of shortcuts that you can add for volume brightness different things there's a lot to the tool that is cool i just wanted to cover this piece and this and once it's more refined i'll probably have a really like in-depth review for you guys anyway guys if you did enjoy the video and you got some value from it make sure to hit the like sub button and i will catch you on the next one peace